Today we are continuing to look at uh, match statements because match statements in Rust are awesome and uh, there's still uh, a lot more to, uh, to learn. And uh, the next thing I wanted to show you was, uh, was how they work with, um, with like multiple variables and it, uh, it kind of looks like the uh, destructuring that we looked like before. So we'll show you what that looks like. So imagine that we are uh, making this function and it's going to, uh, to match some colors, uh, red, blue, and green, and uh, they can be you know, any integer type, usually U8s, but whatever, we'll go with an I32. And so you want to match uh, RBG. And so this is, you know, it's three, three uh, values inside this, uh, this tuple. And so we will go, uh, we'll pull them apart. We'll give them, uh, give them names RBG. And we want to say if uh, R is less than 10, and then we, we're going to say uh, not much red. And then we do that for, you know, three for these other ones. And uh, we'll look at uh, blue and we'll look at green. And if this is low, we're going to say not much blue. And if this is low, we're going to say not much green. <clears throat> and uh, so yeah, that's going to work. Well, once we add this, the final, the final situation where each color has at least 10. So this takes care of all the match arms and, you know, each part of a match is called an arm. So, uh, it goes through these, uh, these arms, these situations, and then, uh, this takes care of everything. And so, uh, one thing you might notice is, um, you know, we're taking in these uh, these three parts of the tuple, but uh, here we're only looking at R. So actually, we don't uh, we don't need B, and we don't need G. So we can just uh, take them out like that, and that's uh, this is nice to do because uh, then we don't have to uh, you know name these variables, and it also shows uh, if somebody else is reading our code that uh, right away we only care about R, we only care about B. So we're pulling these in, but we're not uh, we're not doing anything with them, and they just uh, they just vanish because we don't need them. So let's uh, let's make some tuples and see what we get. So we got uh, first here, uh, second we will make this one all fifty, and then third we will make this two hundred and fifty and zero, and then we are going to match colors uh, with first and then we'll do the same with second and third and by the way this is a uh, well I'll, I'll tell you this in a second so uh, so this first one you can see it, uh, it looks at red uh, it doesn't match this and then it goes down to here and it matches this so it says not much blue but the you'll notice that uh, you know it only says not much blue even though there's uh, not much green. So this is uh, an example of where everything compiles and everything works, but uh, you know the logic is not very good because uh, you're probably you know you want to uh, you're looking for you know which numbers are low, and so a match statement is uh, at least this kind of match statement is not the best way to do it. But uh, it's a good example of how Rust can. Uh, you know, it'll help you compile, it'll, it'll look for all the problems, but, uh, you know, there's still, it won't do everything for you, and maybe your, your logic is, uh, uh, you want to check that yourself. And that's where testing comes in, well, you can look at that later, a lot later, actually. Um, one other thing about uh, matches is uh, they have to return, they have to deal with the same type. So I'll show you how that works. Let's say you have my number here, and then uh, we want this thing called my variable to be something depending on my number. So if it's 10, I don't know why, but we want some variable to be eight. And otherwise we want it to be this thing, this string that says not 10. And this will not work. That's a variable equals match. Of course, I forgot to say match my number. There you go. So the problem is 
Rust is, uh, it sees that we're trying to, to make this variable that could be one type or it could be another type. And that's not, uh, that's not okay. It's not going to let us do that. Uh, this is about, uh, I, I suppose some other languages might, uh, might let you do it, but, uh, it's making sure that, uh, that everything matches and, uh, and it just it just won't let you uh, create uh, one type in one situation and one in another um, and it won't let you do it outside of a match statement either so if you say uh, you know a classic if else so m let my variable let's let uh, my number let's put it back in there <clears throat> so let some variable equals if my number equals 10 it'll be 8 otherwise something else this as well will not work because you know it could be one type or another now here is another example that kind of looks like uh, a loophole but it's not uh, so let's say my number equals whatever so if my number equals uh, 10 uh, and then we have uh, else and then uh, so let's say let my variable equals eight and then here let uh, my variable equals uh, I don't know something else so this will actually be okay mm -hmm. there we go this will actually be okay um, but the the reason for that is that uh, you know you probably remember shadowing and uh, and code blocks and how that works and from rust's point of view this uh, this variable and this variable have nothing to do with each other and they're inside their own separate code blocks and so uh you know it's it's totally uh irrelevant like this variable will start here and then it'll be done and this uh, variable will start here and it'll be done and uh yeah so from its point of view you know this could be uh some other variable they're totally different different variables and they uh, they live separately from each other so it's actually not a loophole. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is uh, it's when you uh, it's when you pull in variables to uh, to a match statement. And so here is uh, the example here. So input we were we are going to match a number. So we'll call it input, and then we'll match it. And then you know let's say you know. Um, we're going to see if they are unlucky numbers or lucky numbers and uh, so here looks like a normal number um, and that here we'll say uh, print line and then we'll say hmm you know 13 is an unlucky number or is a lucky number in Italy a lucky number in Italy and then here, uh, four is uh, an unlucky number in China. You know, something like that. But, uh, you know, maybe we want to, uh, you know, use this, uh, pull this uh, input in. And how would we do that? Like, let's say we wanted to, instead of four, uh, we want to do this and then, I don't know, multiply it by two is, and then we want to, you know, pull it in and, and use it. So how do we do that? And the way you do that is you, uh, you give it a name over here. So let's call it number. And then you put in an ampersand or not an ampersand, a, uh, an at sign there. And then this will, uh, this will let you use this variable over here. And we're going to call it uh, number. And then 13 here, lucky number in Italy, in Boca Lupo. That's what Italians say when uh, when they wish you luck. And so here as well. Uh, and so we're going to, there we go, change that to that. And Boca Lupo. Um, and then we'll just, uh, you know, print it there. And then we're going to <clears throat> go down to main and match some numbers and see what happens. And first, well, first let's make sure that it works. So there you go. 
so we match uh, the number 50 and it goes nope nope yes and it says this is a normal number and then 13 it matches uh, this arm and then it'll give us this uh, this variable called number that we chose and you use this uh, remember it's the at sign to do it and uh, then we just pull it in here and then here uh, we decide for some reason that we want to multiply it by 2. So 4 is an unlucky number in China. Multiplied by 2 is 8. And so that is how you uh, pull these uh, variables into your match statements.